Hey folks, it's the start of our 13th week. It's day 61 of our at-home full body workouts because technically we're still under lockdown. Yes, a lot of people are able to go back to retail um, but are still encouraged to work from home. So while that's happening, we're still going to be putting on our at-home workouts. And um, the venue may change that I'm currently in because I might start doing them from our gym behind closed doors. But ultimately we will still be going with our midday workouts. So today, all you need is a kettlebell or dumbbell. You don't need a chair, you don't need a stool, you don't need a bench, you don't need a table, you just need yourself, some space, and your weight. Whether it's a kettlebell, a dumbbell, a bag of books, a Frankenstein homemade version, they're the best. If you have them, let me know how they look. Uh, send us in a photo and give us a tag. So again, session number 61, start of week 13, and we're gonna go into our full body workout today. In a couple of seconds, just let a couple more people come online. So how are we all doing? Carol, how are we? Session 61 for you, Carol. Hey, teens, how are we? Hey, Maraid. Um, Nin, how are we doing? Hey, Curly. Good stuff, guys, come on in. Stokesy up the road, good work. Peter Kennedy, how you doing, Pete? Um, so again, just get yourselves with your kettlebell, dumbbell, whatever weight you're using, um, a little bit of space, and you do not need a chair, a stool, a bench table. You don't need that. All you need is yourself, some space, and your um, kettlebell. Okay, a couple more seconds. See how many more people come on. I know obviously the numbers are dropping off at midday, but we still run these sessions through Instagram TV and um, YouTube. So again, a lot of people are catching up when they come home from work or on the weekend and um, getting their sessions in. So again, open to suggestions if you guys want. Uh, to give me feedback on times and session lengths and all that kind of stuff, we can always tailor it again. Okay, so give yourself a bit of space down onto the floor. Let's get into our warm up. So, we're going to start with our posterior chain. We're going to work on our hamstrings. You're going to drive through the heels, get the hips as high as you can off the floor, get the hamstrings and butt in play, drop towards the floor, tip the floor very lightly, drive through the heels, get the hips as high as you can. So, again, we're looking to get the hamstrings, the glutes warm. Stretching out the hamstrings, glutes, and hip flexors as well at the top. So let's get one leg into the air, driving through that left heel. Bit of abba on the telly. It's always good. And change of the leg. Again, full range of movement is key. As with everything we do, if you need to focus on the technique, you slow down the tempo, get the technique dialed in, and then start building up that tempo again. Okay, onto our backs, arms out crucifix. You're gonna raise one leg up, bring it across the body as far as you can. Don't let the shoulder blades come off the floor. Bring it back to center and down. Up, across, back and down. Up, across, back and down. We're trying to get as much of a rotation on that spine as possible. Think about your shoulder blades staying on the floor and your upper body twisting independently to the lower like a pepper mill. You get a few clicks and cracks. That's normal. And slowly up you come. Okay, so we're gonna go into a lunge, and when we do the lunge, we're gonna initiate um, a rotation. So we're gonna take a big stride forward, drop the knee to the floor, right hand down beside the instep, and then rotate the torso, open out the chest, and back up. Come. So we're gonna change to the side, left leg forward, left hand down beside your left foot, and rotate the torso. So you're opening away from your front leg. And then we're changing each time. Big stride, hand down, rotate away from your front leg. And keep the feet separated in your lunge, keeping them hip width. There she is. Hey, Nick. Big rotation. Okay, so we're going to keep lunging. We're now going to put the opposite hand on the floor. So I got my right foot in front. I'm going to put my left hand on the floor, and I'm now opening my chest up over the front leg, as opposed to away from it. Let's open up over the front leg. Big twist on the torso. See it again, pushing off the floor with the sole of that foot to get yourself back up again. Last two. Last one. And up we come. Okay, so get your kettlebell. We are going into kettlebell rear lunges. I gotta check my notes because I got a head like a sieve today. It's in one ear and out the other. So we're gonna go for 40 seconds worth of work. There are mini accumulators. We've got three exercises to do. Don't worry if you don't get it, just stay with me. Eight seconds, rear lunge. Hold the bell on the chest or in the right hand. Four, three, kick the leg back. Two, one, and drop me into the floor. Let's go. So we're kicking the leg back, dropping our knee to the floor. 
pushing off the sole of that front foot, standing tall, maintaining the gap between the feet. So each set is 40 seconds on, five seconds transition. At the halfway mark, at 20 seconds, I'm gonna tell you, and we're gonna change hands now. So I'm changing hands and I'm changing legs. So I'm kicking my leg back, dropping my knee to the floor, driving off the sole of my foot. So it's an accumulator. So at the end of this round, we have five seconds, and then we go back to the top of the list, and we go into the first two exercises then, instead of the first one. And rest, five seconds. Bring the bell back to the right side. We're going rear lunge again. Three, two, one, let's go. Kick back, drop knee, push through sole of foot. So again, pushing through the sole of the foot, maintaining the tension between the shoulder blades, squeeze the stomach as we come back up tall. So in seven seconds, we're changing to the left side. Three, two, one, change left side, and go. So in 18 seconds, it's the end of the round, or end of the exercise, and then we're moving into the next one, which is gonna be rear lunge into overhead press. Five seconds, the aim is to keep moving while we build up the movement pattern around this lunge. Rest, back to the right hand. Ready to go rear lunge. When we finish the rear lunge, we come into an overhead press. Let's go. Kick back, drop knee. Up and punch to the sky. Kick back, drop knee. Punch to the sky. So it's a big inhale as we kick our leg back and down. Big exhale, squeeze the core. Push aggressively through the sole of the foot. Up tall. Changing sides, two, one. To the left. Kick left leg back, drop. Up, drive to the right leg. Standing tall. Kick back, drop. Drive to that right leg, standing tall. Seven seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Back to the right hand. Rear lunge only, no overhead press. Let's go. Kick back, drop knee. Up, feet together. So we're focusing on, is using the whole sole of that left foot, dropping the knee all the way to the floor, squeezing your core, keeping your shoulder blades pinned. Five seconds, I'm changing hands. Three, two, one, change hands, let's go. Left leg back and down, right foot, push through the sole. Keeping the shoulder blades pinned, maintaining tension on the stomach at the top. Seven seconds. Then we're back to the right hand, and it's gonna be a punch above the head as we come out of the rear lunge. And rest, change back to the right hand. Feet hip width. Let's go, kick back, drop, up and punch. Kick back, drop, up and punch. <sighs> nice work guys, keep her going. <sighs> so it's all about aggressively pushing through the sole of that left foot. Kick back, drop, up and punch. Change hands. Kick back, drop, up and punch. So you got an extra five seconds on that right side, but we'll make up the difference. Don't worry. Three, two, one. Into the right hand, you're gonna kick your right leg back into a deadlift. Kick back into a deadlift, drive off the left foot, up tall. Shoulders back. Chest proud, stomach muscles tight, feet flat on the floor when you're using them. Your knee is slightly bent and you're pushing through the whole sole of the foot. Four seconds, we're changing hands. Three, two, one, change hands and go. So again, at all times, we are maintaining that posture on the shoulder blades. So in 10 seconds, we're going back to the top of this list of three exercises, and it's gonna be right side again. And rest. So we're going back to the right hand. We're gonna raise our right leg out behind us. Let's go. So if we haven't copped it yet, Nick hasn't. It's three exercises in a block. Once we've done all three exercises, we move on. That's it. Nice work. Keep that going, well done. So, changing hands now. Kick the leg back, drive through the sole of the foot, stand tall. Excellent work. So, 10 seconds, and then we're gonna go back to the right hand, 
and we're going to use the power coming out of that rear lunge to clean that to the chest. Three, two, whoops, one, back to the right hand. So when we come out of this deadlift, it's going to be finishing on the chest. Let's go. So it's up, catch on the chest. Back down into your deadlift, up, catch on the chest. You can put your two feet flat on the floor at the top, but the less time your foot spends on the floor, the better it is for the body. You gotta really generate power with that one leg. Change sides, let's go left hand. So drive the floor away and back down. Excellent, well done. Keep that going, good stuff. Good, five seconds to go. Four, three, two, one. We're back to the right leg, kick it out behind you. Drop the bell to the floor. You look confused. Why are you confused? I don't know what's going on. You don't know what's going on. That's all right, you just follow the instructions blindly. I'll take care of it. Good, so we've got 10 more seconds, we're changing sides. Shoulders back, chest out, head up. And change legs. Back to the deadlift, keep going. That's it. So in 15 seconds, we're gonna be cleaning that bell up to the shoulder. Starting with the right side. Nine, eight, seven, oops, six, five, four, three, two, one. Back to the right side. We're gonna clean up to the shoulder now with our uh, single leg deadlift. And let's go, up to the shoulder. Back down into your deadlift, up to the shoulder. Back down into your deadlift. Oh, flying through it, well done. So in eight seconds, we're changing to the left side. So really focusing on the posterior here. Hamstrings, glutes, and change. Nice work. So drive that leg aggressively into the floor. Shoulders are pinned. Energy transfers up the body. Stomach is nice and tight. Catch that bell on the chest. Back to the right hand, and we're gonna finish above the head after this, and back to the right hand. So we're gonna bring it to the chest and then punch it above the head now. Let's go, kick leg back, drive to the chest, punch above the head, and repeat. Kick leg back, drive to the chest, punch above the head, and repeat. So we're changing sides in 10 seconds, and then we're moving on to three new exercises that we'll build our way up through. Change hands. That's it, nice work. So, 15 seconds, then we're going into kettlebell squat. So drive the floor away, punch it above the head. Three, two, one, back to the right hand, bell on the chest. We're going into squats, right hold, three, two, one, let's go. Push hips back and down, corkscrew the floor away. Push hips back and down, corkscrew the floor away. That's it, nice work. So, keep that going. Six seconds, and then we're changing to the left side. And change left hands, keep squatting. So remember with your squat, you're pushing your hips back and down. You're corkscrewing the soles of the feet into the floor. 10 seconds. And then we're going back to the top of this list of three, which just happens to be squats at the top. Three, two, one. Back to the right hand. Squatting again in three, two, one. Let's go. Push hips back and down. Drive the floor away. Push hips back and down. Drive the floor away. That's it. Good work. Eight seconds. And then... We're switching to the left side. Three, two, one. Switch left side. Let's go. Hips back and down. Drive the floor away. Nice work. 10 seconds. And then we're gonna go into a thruster on the right side. Five, four, three, two, one. Back to the right side. It's gonna be a thruster. Three, two, one. One, let's go. Hips back and down, punch it above the head. And by punching, you are utilizing the energy created by the legs and hips. It transfers up the body through the core and just capitalizes with a push 
above the head, a steer above the head. Change sides, switch to the left. Hips back and down, corkscrew the soles of the feet into the floor, and punch it above the head. 10 seconds, then we're back to the top of the list, which is squats. Five seconds, four, three, two, one. Back to the right side, squats in three, two, one, let's go. Hips back and down, corkscrew the floor away. So really focus on the technique over tempo. Going well guys, keep it up. So five seconds and then we are changing to the other side. Two, one, change, let's go. That's it, 15 seconds and then we're into five second transition and then thrusters. 10 seconds, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And we're into our thrusters on the right side. Three, two, one. Hips back down, drive the floor away. Hips back down, drive the floor away. So after our set of thrusters, we're going to go into our counterbalance squats. And it's only one set. Oh, for now, Whew. so we got 20 seconds, change hands, let's go, keep squatting in those thrusters, 15 seconds, and then we're going to go into counterbalance squats, that's where you're giving the bell away, full arm extension as you sit into your squat, four, three, two, one, two hands on the bell, pushing hips back and down, and give the bell away, straight arms, as you sit into your squat, let's go. So big inhale, push the bell away, big exhale, hope we come. 30 seconds left, and then we're going into sumo deadlift, high pull. Oh, nice work guys. So the whole idea of this is you're taxing the postural muscle, the core, the quads, the glutes, the hamstrings, whew, and the hip flexors. Oh, you gotta really brace your core in order to stay stable with fully extended arms. Five seconds, four, three, two, one. Right hand on the bell, feet nice and wide. Push your hips back and down into a squat. Drive floor away, pull to the chin. Stay with the right side for the 20 seconds. And then we're gonna change to the left for another 20. Whew. So remember why we're doing this, guys. It's, we're still flattening that curve. We're keeping it down now. Okay, change hands. Left side. So we're going back into this exercise again in 10 seconds, because it's top of the list. And remember, you are driving that floor away with the soles of your feet. Three, two, one. Back to the right side. Three, two, one, let's go. Drive that floor away aggressively. So as you can see, so far, we've taken three exercises and we have built it up over the three rounds. So for example, with the deadlift, then it went into clean, change hands, and then it went into clean and jerk. So we are bootstrapping way up through the levels of an exercise. And when we go back through it, we're gonna bootstrap our way down through the exercises. Five seconds, four, three, two, one. Back to the right hand, we're going snatch straight up above the head now, three, two, one. Floor, drive it, finish above the head. Floor, drive it, finish above the head. Nice work. So, 10 seconds, we're gonna change that left side driving the floor away aggressively, transferring the energy, change hands now, up the body, and the arm merely steers that bell above the head. Again, don't worry too much if you still don't follow the tempo or the, the format. It's a little bit tricky if you're not following it on paper like I have here in front of me. You just follow instructions. Back to the right hand, sumo deadlift high pull, three, Two, right side only, one, let's go. From the floor, 
drive it to the chin. From the floor, drive it to the chin. So again, we're focusing on the technique. The tempo will come as a second. Five seconds, we're changing to the left hand. Four, three, two, one. Change left hand. Let's go. So 15 seconds, and then we're back to the right side. And then when we finish the snatch work, we'll move on to the next level. Seven seconds, six, five, four, three, two, one. Back to the right hand, snatch straight from the floor above the head, two, one, let's go. So again, remember, you gotta drop those hips low, because if you don't drop those hips low, you're not coiling the spring. And if you're not coiling the spring, you're not gonna be able to release the energy and let that bell travel. If you're relying on just bending over, those hamstrings and lower back are gonna take a lot of pressure. Change hands now. So it's all about aggression through the soles of the feet, pinning the shoulder blades, and then squeezing that stomach at the top to avoid hyperextending those hips. Two, one. Back to the right hand, from the floor, above the head, into a windmill. So from the floor, up, and then run your hand down to your shoe, come back up, finish the rep. So drive it up, down to your shoe, back up, finish the rep. Seven seconds, so we're adding an extra dimension with every round. Three, two, one, change hands as soon as you can and keep going. So it's from the floor up, and then down, reach the toe or the shoe, and then come back up. So remember, with the overhead, Imagine there's a full glass of water on a tray. You don't want to spill it. So you only go as low as you will allow yourself without spilling. Okay. So we're now going into kettlebell crunch. Everyone on the floor. So we're going into right hand, or sorry, two hand kettlebell crunch. Let's go. Sitting right up. The bell is above the chest. Nice work. So 25 seconds. And then we're gonna take a five second breather. And then you're going back into this exact same exercise again, followed by single arm overhead sky reach. Whew. So again, try not to swing the bell in this exercise. Try and keep it just on the chest or above the chest slightly. Four, three, two, one. Rest five seconds, ready to go again. Four, three, two, one. Up we get. So at the end of this core work, you are then officially halfway through the session, and we're just gonna work our way back through in reverse on all those rounds. Woo. So 25 seconds, and then we're gonna take the bell in the right hand, and you're gonna do a sit up where the bell is pushed up towards the sky reach, as a sky reach. But before that, we got 12 more seconds of crunch. Nine, eight, Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Hold the bell in your right hand. Extend your right hand to the sky. Left hand on the floor. And let's use that left hand to push yourself up. Bell above the head. Back down onto your back again. So it's a sky reacher with the left elbow on the floor. Oh. So we're not going across the body. We're going straight up with the bell. We're just hinging on the left elbow. So the torso we pull very slightly across. We are not throwing the bell forward. We're staying with it on the right side. 10 seconds, and then we're going back to our crunch. Five, four, three, two, one. Bell on the chest, two hands on the bell. Sit-ups in four, three, two, one. One, let's go. And again, try not to throw the bell forward because that just generates momentum. And if you generate momentum, you're not gonna be focusing on your core muscles. So after this, we're gonna put the bell out in our left hand above our chest, and we're gonna do sit-ups on the left arm above the head. 15 seconds, 12 seconds, 11. 10, 9, 
eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Bell in the right hand. Left, or sorry, left hand, right hand on the floor. Extend that left arm, let's go. Sit up, and it's being lifted straight up to the sky. You're not bending your elbow with the arm holding the bell. You're trying to keep that bell fully extended above the chest. So when you sit up, you're pushing it as high as you can from underneath, as opposed to pressing it oh, with an arm. Whew. So that core should be pretty tight right now. Shoulders should be taking a bit of a beating. So in 12 seconds, we're going into our next one. You're gonna go Russian twist, essentially A-frame. So it goes above the head. Five, four, three, two, one. Up we get. Holding the bell in two hands, lean back. We're gonna bring the bell to the right side only in a Russian twist. Right side only, Russian twist. So we're gonna go right side for 20, and then we're gonna go left side for 20. 10 seconds and we're changing to the other side. And at the end of Russian twist, we're back to our three original exercises. Change to the left. And you're lucky because I just realized now I managed to omit one. So we're gonna start in 12 seconds with the right hand above our head and we're gonna go into a rear lunge, right side only. Five seconds, four, three, two, one. And up we get. So back to the top of our list again. We're gonna do those three in reverse. Bell above the head with the right arm. Kick your right leg back, drop the knee to the floor and stand tall using the left leg. Keep that bell above the head. Keep your stomach nice and tight. Drive off the sole of that left foot. So apologies for missing this first time around. Three seconds, two, one. Change hands, change leg, let's go. So in 15 seconds, we're going back to the top of this list again, and it's gonna be right side rear lunge followed by left side rear lunge. Five seconds, four, three, two, one. Back to the right side. Five seconds, it's going above the head. Three, two, one, up. Kick leg back, drop knee, drive off sole of left foot. Kick leg back, drop knee, drive off sole of left foot. Whew. 10 seconds, we're changing sides. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Change sides, let's go. Kick leg back, drop knee, push off sole of right foot. And again, emphasis is on the stomach muscles holding you upright. Soles of the feet pushing flat into the floor. Aggression on the shoulder blades and with that leg drive. Four seconds, we're back to the right side and Rest back to the right side. Rear lunge into an overhead press. Let's go. Kick back, drop knee. Up and punch. Bring it back to the chest before we kick back, drop knee. Up and punch. Shoulders are really feeling that right now. So we're now taking the exercise and dropping down through the levels. Change sides. Left leg, kick back, drop knee. Right foot push aggressively. Up tall. That's it, nice work. So 10 seconds, we're going back to the top of our list and it's gonna be for the last time, rear lunge with an overhead hold. Three, two, one. Back to the right side, bell up, feet hip width, kick back, drop knee, stand tall, let's go. So keep that bell above the head. Try not to let the arm bend, try and keep it directly above the body. Don't let it fall out to the side. Seven seconds, we're changing sides. Take your time, slow it down if necessary. Two, one, change sides. Up and back. And again, take a large enough stride behind you that you have enough range to push through the sole of that right foot and get you back up tall again. Seven seconds, and we're back to the right side. Four, three, two, one. Back to the right side. Hold it on the chest, rear lunge, let's go. And then up and punch. So your overhead aspect is capitalizing on the power given to you by the left leg out of that lunge, and you use that to punch above the head. Eight seconds, we're changing to the left. 
three, two, one. Change left, go. Kick leg back, drop knee, drive to the right. Woo. So 15 seconds, and then we're going into our right side hold, rear lunge, no overhead aspect. Seven seconds, six, five, make sense now? Four, three, <laughs> two, one. Right side, just hold it on the chest, maintain the width on the feet, kick back and drop. Stand tall. So, we have taken it from the overhead hold, rear lunge, to the overhead press, rear lunge, to just rear lunge. So we're working our way back down through the levels. Next exercise we're going into is our single leg deadlift, clean and jerk. Change hands, change legs. So we're going back to the right hand in 15 seconds. You're gonna do a single leg deadlift. You're gonna clean it to the chest and you're gonna punch it above the head. Six seconds, five, four, three, two, one. Right hand from the floor, let's go. All the way down, tip up to the chest, punch above the head. Repeat process. Excellent, well done. So in 12 seconds, you're gonna switch sides. And remember you're generating enough power from the lower body to drive that bell to the chest. You don't pull it to the chest. Change hands, let's go. Drive the floor away, punch it to the sky. So you are generating momentum by maintaining the posture while being aggressive on that legs, extension away from the floor. Three seconds, we're back to the top list, which is, same again. Back to the right hand, two, one. Kick leg back, drive floor away, finish on chest, punch above head. So again, maintain posture on the shoulder blades, aggression through the sole of that left foot, big squeeze on the stomach, punch it above the head, five seconds, changing hands. Four, three, two, one. Change, left hand. Left leg goes out behind you, snap the hips back into place using the sole of that right foot, whilst maintaining posture on the shoulder blades, at all times. Six seconds, then we're going back to the right side and we were removing the overhead aspect. And rest change back to the right side. We're gonna go overhead aspect or no overhead aspect. Let's go. So from the floor to the chest, back down to the floor. That's it guys. Excellent, now we've got it. 10 seconds and then we are changing to the other side. Three, two, one. Change left hand, off we go. That's it. 15 seconds. Remember, you're trying to generate as much power with just one leg. So you have to be explosive whilst maintaining posture and keeping core tight. Going back to the top of the list in three, two, one. We're bringing back in the overhead aspect. Three, two, one. Let's go from the floor to the chest and above the head. And again, maintain that posture. Big squeeze on the core. Keep the body moving. Add a technique that you can maintain, which is perfect. Four seconds, we're changing. Three, two, one, change. Let's go. Kick the left leg back, drive your hips back into place, and then punch that above the head. 10 seconds, and then we're getting rid of the overhead aspect. Five seconds, four, three, two, one. Change back to the right side, just to the chest. Let's go. Kick back up to the chest. Kick back up to the chest. And again, pushing through the sole of that foot, keeping the shoulder blades pinned. Because as we get tired, that bell starts to rule the roost and it pulls your upper body to the floor, as opposed to your upper body maintaining posture and lowering itself to the floor. Change hands, let's go. So again, do not let your shoulder blades open out like a pair of wings. You gotta keep them pinned back, tension between your shoulder blades at all times. Eight seconds, and then we are removing the chest aspect. Three, two, one. So it's just the deadlift aspect now. Three, two, one. Kick leg back, 
Stand tall, hip finishes in front of your thigh. Stand tall, hip finishes in front of your thigh. And again, regardless of whether you're going above the head or just the chest, you're still driving through the sole of the foot, you're still maintaining posture on the shoulder blades, and you are still squeezing your stomach muscles. Getting ready to change now. So we're going into our counterbalance squats next, and this is gonna be a killer, because we've got three rounds of them. 10 seconds, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Grab the bell, two hands. You're gonna push your hips back and down, three, two, one. Hips back and down, extend the arms out in front, stand tall. Keep your stomach muscles squeezed at all times. If you don't, that bell is gonna start falling to the floor. And if that bell starts falling to the floor, your posture is gonna go to pot. And we don't want that. So remember, hips back and down, shoulder blades pinned, stomach tight, aggression through the soles of the feet. Keep the knees pushed out, make sure the soles of those feet maintain full contact with the floor at all times. 10 seconds, then we're gonna shake it out and go again. Oh, so tough when you do it right. Three, two, one, rest five seconds. We're going again in four, three, two, one, let's go. Lead with the hips, knees follow the hips. Your hips do not follow your knees. You keep your shoulder blades pinned, you keep your stomach tight, and you focus on that perfect technique. Because the only thing that's gonna get you out of jail is that perfect technique. Whew. Momentum isn't gonna help here, because momentum will throw your posture off entirely. Whew. 15 seconds, and then we're going into oh, thrusters. Oh, 10 seconds, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Bell in the right hand. Thrusters, feet shoulder width. Whew. Hips back and down. Coil the spring, release it. Bell goes above the head. Hips back and down and release it. Nice work, guys. At the end of this, right and left, we're going into counterbalance squat for our last time. Ready to change hands in three, two, one. Switch hands. Let's go. Hips back and down like you're coiling the spring. Push corkscrew style through the soles of your feet aggressively. That will in turn generate power through your core and into your arm, which allows you to steer it above the head. Three seconds, two, one. Two hands on the bell. Ready to go counterbalance. Last time. Three, two, one. Let's go. Big inhale, push your hips back, squeeze your core, exhale up. Whew. Big inhale, squeeze your core, oh, and up. Keep squeezing that core. 30 seconds to go. Oh, and it's the last set of counterbalance squats for the day. Oh, 20 seconds. How did we find our man maker burpees on Friday? Oh, there's more different kinds of burpees as well. Whew. 10 seconds, nine, eight, seven. Posture, posture, posture. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Back onto the right shoulder. Whew. Thrusters, let's go. So, if you're doing the counterbalance squat properly, those shoulders should be feeling it. So you're not gonna be able to punch that weight above the head on its own. You're gonna need to rely on what's happening on the leg and hip drive. Five seconds, changing to the left. Three, two, one, change. Hips back and down, drive floor away, above the head. And again, like I said at the start, if you don't follow the format, that's fine. Just stay with me, there's logic to it. Seven seconds, six, five, four, three, two, one. Back to the right side, squats only. Three, two, one. One, let's go. So at the end of this, the bell is gonna go on the floor in between your feet, and you're gonna do a snatch, followed by a windmill. And then we're gonna go snatch, followed by a windmill again, and then it's just a regular snatch. Change sides, and then it's sumo down a tight pull. 15 seconds. And then we're into our second last block. Good. 
endurance session today, guys. Eight seconds. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Bell on the floor, right hand on the bell. Drop your hips, coil the spring, back nice and straight. Drive it above the head, and then run your hand down the leg as close as you can to the foot without that bell falling forward. And repeat process. Up to the snatch, down to the foot, back up to center. So we're starting to bring a little bit more direct core in here. Three seconds changing, two, one. Change, left hand. Let's go. Drive floor away, run hand down, and back up. So again, only go as low as that bell above your head will allow. Take your time. Seven seconds, six, five, four, three, two, one. Rest back to the right side, we're going again. Three, two, one, let's go. Above the head, down, tip your shoe, back up, or as close to the shoe as you can get. If you can only run your hand down past your knee, that's fine. So we're just trying to get them up, have a twist on the core, and then some rotational work on the shoulder as well. Change hands, left hand, let's go. So I always find I'm tighter reaching my right hand down than I am to my left. But again, that's down to individual mobility. Six seconds, five, four, three, two, one. Back to the right side, regular snatch, no windmill. Three, two, one, let's go. So if we're tired, we gotta put our weight through the heavier muscles and get the heavier muscles doing the lifting because they're the ones that take longer to fill up with lactic acid and CO2 so they can last longer. Three seconds, we're changing to the right side. Now, our left side now. So again, do the driving with the big fellas and do the steering with the little fellas. 10 seconds and then we're into our last round of windmill snatch. Four, three, two, one. Back to the right hand. Ready to go, windmill snatch. Three, two, one, let's go. From the floor, straight up, down, tip your foot, come back up. Down to the floor, drive it away, straight up above the head, down, tip the foot, back you come. Whew. It's a good one today, guys. Serious amount of work required. It's a long one. And change, other side. So don't be afraid to use your hand actually on the inside of your leg. Use it as a guide rail to get yourself as low as possible. But always keeping an eye on that bell. Five seconds, and then it's two more deadlift high pull on the right side, two, one. Back to the right hand, we're almost there. Three, two, one. There we go. Drive the floor away, steer it to your chin. Drive the floor away, steer it to your chin. And again, it's all about power with the soles, the feet, and the hip and leg extension. We're using those legs to drive the floor away. Change hands now, and then that energy travels up through the core and allows the arms to steer that bell, which is traveling autonomously. Oh, 10 seconds, and then we are going into our left side Revert, or sorry, we're not, we're going into our bar, uh, bar oh, geez, I can't speak. kettlebell crunch. Down, floor, let's go. So we're gonna stay with a kettlebell crunch, bell on chest, let's go. This is the last three exercises, and we are staying with it on the same format we went through at the start. Because OCD dictates we hit the left side as much as we hit the right. So it's the last three exercises, stay with me guys. We're almost there. Remember, we're trying to take momentum out of the equation, so we don't want to swing that bell. If anything, keep it on co in contact with your chest, which makes sure that you're not throwing it away from the body and you're focusing on your core, lifting it up. Three, two, one, rest. We're going again in five, four, three, same again, two, one, let's go. Whew. So at this point, we're about two minutes away from the finish line. Stay with me. That's the one, guys. So in 25 seconds, 
You're going to put that bell in your right hand and you're going to do sit-ups, reaching the hand to the sky oh, for the full round. Oh, my core is really starting to burn. My shoulders aren't helping because they're pretty fatigued. Oh, and the sweat levels are making me slip a little bit with every rep. Whenever I go back down on my back. Two, one. Put the bell in your right hand. Put your left arm on the floor to the side. Feet on the floor. And let's go. Sit up and you're pushing that bell to the sky. You are not bending your elbow when you're down flat on your back. You are using that left elbow on the floor as a fulcrum. Nail the left elbow to the floor, which in turn allows you to drive yourself up. And then you control the descent and you do not let those knees move. Imagine you've got a full glass of water on each knee. We don't want it to spill. Woo. So after this, we're going back into our crunch with two hands on. And then it's right side elbow on the floor. And then it's left side Russian twist to finish it all off. Two, one. Bell on your chest, two hands on the bell. Last set of crunches with the bell on the chest. Let's go. So again, it's all about control. You are looking to control the hiring of the body through the core and the lowering of the body through the core. So we don't throw the bell forward to get momentum to pull you up and we don't just flop to the floor because on those occasions, on the way up, you're using the bell, on the way back, you're using gravity. So your core doesn't actually have to do anything. Remember, we are focusing on the core. Momentum is not the core's friend. <sighs> 10 seconds when you're doing exercise like this. Seven seconds, six, five, four, shoulders burning, three, two, one. Bell in the left hand, right hand on the floor, elbow digging in, and sit up. <sighs> So we are a minute and a half away oh, from the finish line. Woo! So it's 40 seconds punching up with the left hand. Oh, then it's 40 seconds Russian twist to the left. And then it's high fives all round, all for lunch. Oh, 16 seconds, 15. Oh, 10 seconds, nine. Eight, take the momentum out of the equation. Control, six, five, four, three, two, one. Up we come, two bell, hands on the bell. Lean back, feet very lightly on the floor. Twist to the left, back to center. Twist to the left, back to center. And again, we are looking for that perfect core hold. Leaning back at about 45 degrees. And then while you're under pressure holding that core, you're also rotating. It's very similar to a bent over row where you don't have your hand on the chair. The body is already in contraction before you ask it to do something. So it's doubly tiring. 12 seconds to the finish line. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, rest. Woo. And that is the start of week 13, the last one. Yeah. Now I did it the same way as the first time around because OCD dictates you want to get the core right around. You were occupied with the kids there for a second. I snuck it in under the radar. How are you feeling? Fine. Fine, she's feeling fine. Fine, not sweaty at all. How are you guys feeling? Probably fe felt a bit disjointed at the start, but trust me, I have all the notes. They made sense to me, and you just blindly follow me. That's all I ask. Absolute blind obedience. Isn't that right, Nick? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, guys. So, give yourself a bit of space. We'll get into our cool down stretches. So we'll go nice and wide with the feet. We're gonna go soft on the knees. Put all the weight on your heels. Stick your butt out the back and just hang. And the reason we're doing this is because we wanna do a passive stretch where we're stretching out our hamstrings, stretching out our groin, and we're stretching out our lower back, shoulder blades, and traction out our shoulders. So if you don't feel this on the groin, just spread your feet a little wider. And as the groin stretches out, you'll actually be able to just walk the feet a little further each time, just to get the stretch and keep the stretch on the groin. So again, relaxing through the shoulder blades, keeping the emphasis on the body just hanging in through nose, out through mouth, slowing everything down, Controlling the breathing. 
Whew, 10 more seconds, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And I want you to come forward into a lunge. You're gonna interlock your fingers. You're gonna put them behind your head and you're just gonna push your hip forward. So in through nose, out through mouth. So you got 45 seconds off on that workout today, guys, because uh, out of my eagerness to get through it, the first time round, we didn't actually do our rear lunge with the overhead hold. Change sides. So if you're a lunatic OCD like me and the camera's off, feel free to do 40 seconds of overhead rear lunge, 20 on the right and 20 on the left, because it'll just eat you up inside, because I know how dedicated you are to your training. Um, okay, up we come guys. Drop the right hand down the back in between the shoulder blades, left on the elbow. Pull to the left, feel the stretch down the right side. Should be on prescription for everybody. Yeah, should be. And change. Well, you're the one who can prescribe it, Margaret. Um, okay, so we're pulling down to the right side, so feeling the stretch on the left. Back to center, big breath in through the nose. Exhale out the mouth. So guys, like I was saying earlier on, um, the venue I'm in may change, but I'm gonna be here all this week, midday, for the foreseeable, um, and then if there's any change going forward, I will advise otherwise. Um, we have, those of you who are training and have the ability to train physically at Tone Fit, we've opened up for outdoor boot camps. Um, they are now at six to eight people um, outdoors, and then we are also looking at the possibility of being able to train somewhat indoors, but again, we have to check and uh, see if we tick all the relevant boxes. Okay guys, so enjoy the rest of your day. It's sunny outside, get outside, drink some water before you do, uh, eat some food and behave yourselves. See you tomorrow.